out at eighth grade. We're in section 7.6, example three, and we are at the crowning moment of this whole entire chapter. We're, learned, we're taking everything we've learned about GCF and trinomials and perfect square trinomials and difference of two squares, and we're putting it all together because you may have a fairly complicated polynomial that requires several steps of factoring. Now here's the basic game plan. This is our scorebook right here. We're gonna first look for GCF. If there's a GCF, pull it out. Next, we're gonna look for a perfect square trinomial if it's a trinomial, or a difference of two squares if it's a binomial. Well, let's just see if it's special. If it's not special, that's okay. We can then move on and just normally factor that trinomial like we did with our strategies, okay? We have strategies from section 7.3 and 7.4 that we can employ when it's a regular trinomial. And then just double check for any common factors at the end. That just ensures that we haven't skipped anything, okay? We have binomials and we just wanna make sure we pulled everything out that can be pulled out. So let's start with letter A. First thing we wanna look for is that GCF. If, it's a, if the only GCF is a one, don't pull it out, just leave it alone. If it's any other number than one or a variable, that's a GCF, we need to pull that out. So as I'm looking at two X squared plus five X plus four, the only thing common is one. So not gonna pull a GCF out. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to assess whether it's a perfect square trinomial or difference of two squares. Well, it's not a difference of two squares because that only applies to binomials. I have a trinomial. So at best, it's a perfect square trinomial or at worst, it's just a regular trinomial. And it's definitely not perfect square trinomial because of that two right there. That's not, two is not a perfect number. So uh, that takes that off the table. So really, the only other thing we can do is try to factor it like we did in section 7.4, okay? Now, as you may recall, in 7.4, we multiply the first number, 2, times the last number, 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Now, I'm going to list my factors of 8. I've got 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. Now, which of those factors sets of factors adds up to be five, which is the middle term, five X. What? None of them do, that's right. One plus eight is nine, two plus four is six. Neither of them add up to be five. So you know what? This is not factorable. And we're just gonna stop right here. We don't need to do any more work. It's not factorable. It doesn't have a GCF. It's not a perfect square trinomial, and when we tried to factor the trinomial, we found out it's not factorable. So that's what you would write, or that's what on multiple choice tests, that's what they would write as one of your answers, not factorable. Okay, so hopefully I made that really clear. If that wasn't clear, back up the video, watch it one more time, listen one more time, and then if you still don't understand it, bring your questions to class. All right, let's go on to letter B. Okay, need to pull out a GCF. Okay, 3, 15, and 12. That would be a 3. End of the 4th, end of the 3rd, end of the 2nd. That would be end to the 2nd. All right, let's see what's left behind. Looks like n squared minus 5n plus 4. Okay, so um, we could try and factor that. What are factors of... Four that add up to be negative five. So I'm listing those right now. Thankfully, it is a short list, and I do thank God for that. There's only four choices, and only one of them adds up to be negative five, and that's it right there. So you know what? This trinomial actually is factorable, and so I'm going to create my two quantities and I'll put negative four in one of them and negative one in the other. And the last thing I'm gonna do is check for common factors from those quantities, and they both have a GCF of one. I didn't skip anything, we're finished. All right, that looks so good, great job. So we pulled out a GCF, we factored that trinomial, we checked for common factors, 
looks great. We're done with that. All right, let's look at C. Uh, C is, yeah, there's definitely a GCF there. Let's pull out a 2 and an X. That's going to leave us with a 2X squared and a 9X and a 10. Okay, we're going to need to factor that trinomial. It's just a plain old trinomial. Nothing special about it. It's not a perfect square trinomial. So let's multiply 2 times 10. Okay, that's 20. And I need factors of 20. So I've got 1 times 20, and I'll do the negative factors off to the side. Uh, 2 times 10. 3 doesn't work. Uh, 4 and 5. And I think that's it. So as you're looking at them, which of those pairs adds up to be 9? Yep, this one. Okay, now because there's this 2 out in front, we're going to have to factor by grouping. So when you write this, write it by renaming that 9x as 4x plus 5x. Okay, because we're going to factor by grouping. We can't solve it the same way we did in B because the uh, coefficient in front of that um, n squared inside your quantity was a 1. So we could take a shortcut there. Can't take a shortcut in C because of this 2 that's out in front. Okay? Alright, so let's factor by grouping. So we need to pull a GCF out of the 2x squared and the 4x. So let's pull out a 2x. Okay, that's going to leave me with x plus 2. And then we're going to pull out a GCF out of here. So let's pull out a positive 5. And that's going to leave me with x plus 2. And then last but not least, we're going to drop down our, our original GCF we pulled. We have a common binomial. So I'm going to write that in its quantity. And then I'm going to write 2x plus 5 in its quantity. And there you go. We are fully factored. I do not see any common factors. A little low on the page. I apologize for that. We probably needed just a little bit more room to get that done. But we did a great job. And this is your answer right here. That line right there is your answer. Okay? Great job. Let's look at D. I'm going to do one more with you and then we'll flip to the next page and I'll pick and choose some, some extra credit for you. Alright, so uh, I don't see a GCF because the X's are not in all three terms, and we have a 3, a 7, and a 4, so GCF would be 1 there. So I'm not going to pull out a 1. It's not perfect square trinomial. So let's just try and see if it's factorable. Okay, so let's do 3 times 4. Okay, that's 12. I need factors of 12 that add up to be 7. I think I got it right there. Okay, so we're going to factor by grouping. I have to because of that 3 that's out in front. Okay, factor by grouping if it's a number other than 1 out front. If it's just a 1 out front, then you can solve it like you did letter B. Okay, so we're going to rename 7x as 3x and 4x. All right, let's pull out a GCF from the first two. That's 3x, which is leaves behind an x plus 1. And then the second one, let's pull out a positive 4. That's going to leave an x plus 1. And then you see your common binomial. So pull that out. And what's left behind goes into its own quantity. All right. The last thing I would do is look for common factors in both of them. And I don't see any. So I think we did a good job. And that is your, that's how you factor that. That's fully factored. We checked everything. Look for GCF. It's not a perfect square trinomial. We factored the trinomial, found it to be factorable, and got our answer checked for common factors. Nothing left. Okay? All right, I'm going to flip to the next page. I don't think you have another page, but I know I do. Now, I'm going to leave a couple of these for you. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to let you do E. F. Okay, what you guys do those. I want to do H with you for sure, and I'll, I'll make a decision about G. Okay, so let's look at H. We have P to the fifth minus P. Make sure you pull out a GCF. Okay, hopefully you see that P is the GCF. 
and that's going to leave us with p to the 4 minus 1. Now, since it's a binomial and we have an exponent on that p that's even, that is suspiciously could be a difference of two squares, and it is. So let's go ahead, create our two quantities. They are going to be identical. Remember, p to the fourth, just to split it up, take half of four, so put two of them here, and put the other two here. And then one and one, make one of them positive, one of them negative. Okay? Now let's look at our quantities before we get too crazy and decide, hey, I'm done. Um, I look at this quantity in particular. Do you see how P has an even exponent? We have a minus sign and we have a one, which is also a perfect square. We have another difference of two squares, another one. So we're going to drop this down because you can't factor sum of two squares. That's why I'm leaving that one alone. You can't factor that. There's no such thing as factoring a sum of two squares, but you can factor a difference of two squares. Now I want to break up p squared, so put one of them here, the other one here. One breaks up to one times one, put a plus sign, then a minus sign. Now we're finished. That's fully factored. Okay? That's tricky because we had not one difference of two squares, but we had a second one after we factored it. A lot of students will stop right here and they don't see that this is a difference of two squares as well. They just don't see it. And so they stop too soon, okay? You've gotta be on your toes and, and make sure that it's not. Now make a note somewhere on your notes. Um, the sum of two squares is not factorable. Okay, I think you're going to save yourself a lot of heartache here if you can just write that down somewhere. You can factor the difference of two squares, but you cannot factor the sum of two squares. Not possible. That's why we can't, why I didn't factor p squared plus one. That's a sum of two squares. It's not factorable. Okay, decision made. You guys can do letter G on your own for an extra bonus point. Okay. So give it your best shot, follow our four steps, pull out a GCF, see if it's a perfect square trinomial or a difference of two squares and factor accordingly. If it's just a regular trinomial, factor it and then check for common factors. Follow that four step process and you will fully factor these every day of the week. Okay, bring your questions to class and I'll be checking your notes tomorrow.